What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So, Eldane. Eldane, nothing's really changed in the last patch. And by nothing, I mean actually nothing. Nothing at all has changed in Eldane. Uh, this is the exact same deck, card for card, that I was playing last patch. Um, but it turns out Eldane is still really good. Um, so typically in the past, Eldane has been bad against big monsters. And there's no big monsters because nobody's playing it. I don't know. Um, so the new big monsters right now would be, uh, Svalblood. Svalblood is kind of big monsters. A, a little bit. Anyway, um, so this deck is still really good. Uh, I typically don't play it very often on stream because, um, yeah, there's reasons. Uh, but basically I, I don't play because every now and then I'll, I'll queue into somebody who, uh, is watching the stream and they have, uh, information and... Normally I'm okay with this, but playing an Eldane deck, uh, you get severely punished if your opponent knows the cards in your hand because they can play around certain traps. Uh, the beauty of trap cards is you can surprise your opponent or play something that they don't expect and kind of mess around with their head. You can't really do that if they know all the cards in your hand. But uh, I, I decided yeah, just give it a whirl because trap decks are a lot of fun. Uh, and it, it went really well today. I won something like every single game except for one. My opponent won coin flip, drew Ida, and drew Cleaver in their opening hand. It's like a nine card or nine gold card hand round one. So uh, yeah, it's a really good deck. Um, I'm not going to go over the deck because it's identical to the other Eldane lists that I've put up in the past. Um, I will say this. The hardest thing about this deck is knowing to push or not to push round one. So... Um, the best way to know whether or not you can push around one, it has nothing to do with whether or not you won or lost coin flip. If you won coin flip and you're going uh, second, you, you can push into the round as much as you want because you can always pass, obviously. Um, but typically the way I can uh, gauge whether or not I can push around one is Crushing Trap. This card right here. Crushing Trap is going to be the card that determines whether or not you can go really hard. Because the longer the round goes, the more units your opponent plays, the more value you're going to add. You're going to get out of Crushing Trap. So typically, if I want to win round one, I need to have Crushing Trap in my hand. Uh, and the way you can have Crushing Trap is you have two Crushing Traps, you have Avalok the Sage, and you have Call of the Forest into Avalok the Sage into Crushing Trap. So you have four ways to hit Crushing Trap in round one. So the odds of you not having Crushing Trap are fairly slim, but eh, it does happen. Every now and then you have no access to it and it kind of sucks, but... Typically, you have uh, a way to find Crushing Trap. Um, obviously, if you have Summoning Circle and you do have Crushing Trap, feel, feel free to play Summoning Circle uh, turn one, round one. Um, make sure to row stack for Oak. Yeah, uh, first time, if, if you've never played a Trap deck before, it might feel weird. Um, I typically always mulligan my Incinerating Traps away in round one. I like to save them for round three. Um, look for your gold cards in round three. If you do have Call of the Forest in round three, make sure you have one gold card in your deck, one gold elf in your deck. So what I mean by this is if you have Call of the Forest in your hand, uh, typically your final play in round three is going to be something like flip all your traps into uh, Dead Eyes with Eldine, and then you're going to Call of the Forest one of your elves and pull out Isengrim uh, to boost all your elf because the later you play it, the more value you're going to get out of it. So typically... Uh, if I have Call of the Forest in my hand and I've drawn Yorvith and Avalok the Sage, which are your other two gold elves, uh, I will mulligan Isengrim away in round three so that I can Call of the Forest it. So keep that in mind. You do want to call target, which is going to typically be a gold card. So uh, yeah, um, I'm just going to throw a bunch of games. This is going to be kind of a longer video. I'll do, I don't know, three games or so, maybe, maybe more. Um, yeah, because at the end of the day, the, the best way to learn how to play a deck is to play the deck or watch other people play the deck. Um, I would so highly suggest that you play the deck if you want to get better with it. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, we'll play Aldane for a bit. No crushing. So I can't go deep if I don't find crushing. No call, no cushion, can't go deep. Which means I can't play circle. Hmm. Nah. 
Swords I smile at. Weapons love. If I have crushing in hand, I turn one summoning circle because it means I can go really far into the round. But with no crushing, I can't go far. Forgive me, but I must. You swears. Why are you emoting for that? You you already know what's gonna happen. Slaughter them to a man. You should not have come here. I said I wasn't gonna go hard, but I changed my mind. We're going hard now. <laughs> he messed it up! He got greedy and typed in ye before the finish. You know how awkward it is to mess up your own pyramid? How bad must that feel? You get the one, you get the two, you get the three, you get the two, and then you get excited and then rest in peace. That's gotta suck. Kiss we will take back what was stolen. So, does anybody know if this counts for oak? Has anybody tested it? He gave me the round. Which is really good, because I didn't invest anything. We win. If we can find crushing traps, I think we just auto-win the game. Dragoons are cute, but other cards are cuter. Okay, I need trap cards, please. <laughs> we need trap cards. It's fine. New music? I mean, yeah, it's totally new. There we go. Trap cards. I don't know. You guys can meme all you want, but this music is good. All right, so because we drew all our gold cards, all our, well, our gold units, we need a call target, and that's always going to be this card right here. So we always mulligan this. Two crushing is good. Uh, we have Ava for pit, so we have three traps right now, plus horny. So we have four traps, which is enough. Do we ever want to take a mulligan here? No, I don't. It's good. Why not play Gambit instead of Avalok? Because I can tutor out Avalok. Right? Like, if I had Gambit right here, there's a 100% certain chance that I would hit double incinerating trap and I would baby rage. What is this shit? Wait, is this the... oh no. Is this the Shiza? This is like the multi-engine deck? Yeah, yeah you can call Ava. What the shit is this? Mate. Shiga. You best yield now. Ah, it's this shit. Sneaky, sneaky. Ditto. That's so thon. Thank you for the hundred bits. Ditto, yes. Da. Thank you, man. Na na na. I need this to die. Alright, RNG. Take the wheel. 
We need to stop Peace this nonsense. Humans, Shiva. I mean, it's one point. I don't really care. It's not a big deal. What's on your shirt? Oh, nobody figured it out. I've had this shirt for like, I don't know, five years? I've had this shirt for a long time. Yeah, this is my suit. No, it's, uh, it's the Joker. Did we just lose three? One? Ah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I've had it. I mean, I'm doing it. It's shit, but I'm doing it. I mean, it's not shit. It's fine, but like. Well played, my friend. These decks play Isbel. I am who I need to be. I need to be playing around Isbel. Because what he can do is he can put a card on the top of a deck and that scares me. Faces. All yours to command. But if he has nobody plays games with pumpkin, don't be ridiculous. So the question is, is do we play around his last card being a spy? Because if we play it here, we have three, six, seven, eight. And if he plays a spy, I lose value on my oak, and I lose a lot of value. So I think we play around it. We play back here. I strive above all to be just. <laughs> GG. Pretty easy game. This deck doesn't actually have any points. Well played, my friend. Speak your mind. To the point.
If not by strength, then by stealth. All right. No door is closed. So because we have crushing trap, I can go hard. May your sword and arm be one. Once in my life, I want to visit you and play some Gwent together and talk about the world. That would be fun. Got it. They can hide, but there is no escape. Is Gwent bigger in Europe than in AES? 100%. Only a real chatter can build a perfect pyramid. Do we have any real chatters in chat? Because apparently chatting is now defined on how well of a pyramid you can make. Me danger. Yeah. All right, so this is going to look very bizarre. Don't emote. I, I'm roping on purpose. This is going to look crazy, but I think it's correct. So the idea is I'm always saving this for my final play. I always have Leo. Saving this plays around Leo and it plays around Anna, which I don't have to deal with later. And that's very important. I'm like 87% sure this is correct. Why not kill the Infiltrator? I don't care. It's not like we're gonna draw Infiltrator. And if we draw it, we just slam it on the board. 87? Only 87? What do you mean only 87? Fine, 93. We'll bump it up 6%. Okay, with these draws, I'm like 97%. We, we went up a whole 10%. Now we just need to draw Horny or Pitfall and we're in business. Why are they right next to each other? That's ridiculous. Why are they next to each other? Ay ay ay. Alright, let's play around Sheila and smash this turn one. It's only bad if they play shoot, but he played two infiltrators, so I don't think it's shoot. Oh, they're pals? Oh, okay. I always find Hockey streamer gets owned by Infiltrator. Yeah, but I don't change my line of play in any way, shape, or form. So, like, is it cocky? I don't know. Yeah. Wait, his Anna is shit. Oh. Oh, wow! So good. I'm going to bank. I mean, he can call. He can call a human for another human, I guess. Doesn't really matter where I play these. Nothing matters. This game is over. Do you th ever think a player should be allowed to shuffle their deck once a game? No. Shuffle their deck? No, oh, what? Why are you playing Lightning Stick? Because it's an extra, it's an extra body, it's an extra card on the board for Oak. We were playing cards on the board. 
And yet another. Anna value? Oh, dude, this Anna value is gonna be sweet. He gets to do something. I don't know what he's gonna do. Which one do you want? They're all beautiful cards. I mean, the answer is always call, but like, what are you calling? The forest. Well, there's a one. There you go. What are you gonna get? <gasps> oh. Notice. Like a five point leader. Wow. Okay, that's not true. It gets the boost. Make my leader. I strive above all to be just. No, you should reset the nine. It's more points. to be. A crushing is going to be worth more than an extra pit Push because... On! No mercy! Oh. For man, it makes no difference to me. This game's like super duper over. Matchup. I basically, if he has Frightener, I lose. <laughs> I need him not to have Frightener in round one. No, I need him to never draw Frightener in any round, basically. It's a really hard matchup. Because your crushing traps are basically useless. Look into my Okay, with with circle we can do this. Do you intend on buying anything from CDPR store? They don't ship to the US, so it's kinda hard. <laughs> um But I mean the the stuff that they're selling is well priced. I might buy like when when it comes out on the US I might buy like a shirt or two. I was gonna buy the Geralt figure because I love those types of figures, and then Let's I looked at the price. It's like two hundred and thirty dollars. I don't really want to spend two hundred thirty dollars on a Geralt figure. It's kind of expensive. You can ship it to me for 700. I could fly there and fly back for cheaper. Geralt figure is so nice, you don't have place in my- wait, how big is it? I didn't actually look at the size. Is it that big that you don't have room for it? That's pretty big. Slaughter them to a man! I shall not fail! Or how tiny his room is? Yeah, I mean, but... Uh. 
It's bigger than the cyberpunk figure. I don't own the cyberpunk figure. That didn't, that like doesn't really help. I'm sorry. Is this stuff actually expensive? The shirts are well priced. I wouldn't say that the average thing is expensive, but the Geralt figure is expensive. But they're typically that expensive because they're like the quality is really nice. So like, it's not a surprising price. Am I gonna do the math? I don't really feel like it. That's enough. You shall taste of your own medicine. Math is hard. Well, it's just like there's a lot of moving things. I don't even have to blow oak. I did the math on oak, but I think we can get away with Isengrim. Which do I want to blow? Oak or Isengrim? Typically Oak is worth more. Yeah, if I don't flip this, it's a tie. I don't really want to tie. Alright, alright, Pumpkin, you ready? Wait, we play Avalok. Our consistency is off the charts here. We need to draw one of these Ooh, two cards by round three. That's it, it's just one of the two. Claytorus, thank you for the 16 months. Welcome back. Appreciate it, man. The math music? Yeah, the math music. All right, we need to draw some traps here. We need minimum. Good. Good. Alright, my call is garbage now, so we mulligan like a gold card. Me thinks. What gold card am I mulling? Well, we can mull this first. I mean, we can always rip out an archer. It's not bad. I do want to find one more trap, though. It falls a gold now? It's always been a gold. I do this because I most likely will call off a lock the sage to play around the uh, certain cards. Uh, we're stacking back row, right? Because these are going to ping singles. This is back row. The only card that's not back row is Dragoon, but that's it. Hopefully he doesn't have myth roll. I want to play this, but I'm super scared of dive.
Is draw cancel auto win against AQ? It should be. Yeah, it should be. Peace All right, I'm gonna play around bless their predatory dive. I hate incinerating against AQ because they just like throw an ancient fog letter or a harpy egg into it. Probably the worst possible card you could have played. I never miss. This is wrong. Am I really playing around dive? So he can still dive me. This is the problem. He can double ping my four and then dive my dragon, which makes me really sad. Like. Am I really going to keep playing around dive? Because we're losing points. Like, I could play Archer here, but we lose points. Uh, we actually don't lose points. No, we should save this, because crushing goes one row, and then whatever ones are on the back row, we should be hitting with Archer. No, I'm not going to play around that anymore. Can't play around it for, for uh, forever. There's no dive. I don't think there is, but whatever. Transform trap. Yeah, I mean, I could do that, but like, ugh, I don't want to do that. I'm pretty sure this is actually an Oki turn. No bamboozle. I think it's actually correct. I think so, actually. We're losing, like, four points? But four turns of consume is four points, and maybe he can't eat this. Yeah, Oak Count's face down cards now. They patched it, they fixed it, which is a really nice change, because that wasn't the case before. All Pog, dude. I think we win. I'm like 80% sure we win. I hate how he gets one drops from that. Whatever. Kinda silly. Like, it makes sense, but like... Um... He can kill this and deny horny value, so we should be flipping this. <laughs> No, I'm aware why Pitfall Trap works. I, I, I understand the concept. Uh, once you hit pro rank, you cannot lose pro rank until the end of the season. At the end of the season, if you are not top 500, you do not get to keep pro rank. It disappears. Um, the next season, you go back to rank 5. But once you are in pro rank until the end of the season, 
you are safe. So you could lose 50 games in a row and you'll be okay. Uh, granted, this does not mean go auto-concede 50 games because it will count as win trading and you will get banned, so don't do that. But as long as you don't do that, you'll be okay. So don't win trade. Top 500 global, yeah. How much am I for top 500? Every season it goes up because new players are coming every season, so... Uh, I don't know what it was last season, but I would say you need an average of 2,500 MMR on each faction, on four of the five factions, so you need, yeah. You need 10k MMR at this point. I think you're gonna need about 10k MMR at the end of this season. Because the number just keeps going up. But hey, what do I know? It was 24.60 last season? Yeah, and the season before that, it was like 24.40. It goes up like 10 to 20 every season. Could you make it up to number one? Um, I've been number one before. Not for very long, though, like a day. Uh, to get number one early on, you just have to play a shit ton. Uh, typically, I end the season top 50, top 100. Because towards the end, I stop taking it seriously. I'll peak at like top 10, top 8. Because the people at rank 1 towards the middle of like the month are like Game King, Pronio. People who are cranking. They, they, they play more Gwent than I do. Right? And realize that I stream it. They don't. They just do it. They play a lot of Gwen. You could auto-concede at start of season and you become top one. Yeah, that would work. Uh, but your account would be banned for... Um, uh, what? Win trading. Name of the song. Or they play it better. No, they have more games than I do. You can look at the end of the season. I'll have like... However many games I have, they have like plus two to three hundred more games than me. They, they just play a shit ton of Gwen. They can hide, but there is no escape. Why not do that earlier? That's weird. Alright, we have to do math. Do we really, though? We don't actually have to do math. I'm not gonna do the math. <laughs> Screw that. Peace with humans, abide us. It's always enough. Have you checked out the Hearthstone expansion? Yeah, I've been playing it. Three, six, ten, fourteen, nineteen, twenty-nine. Did I do that math correctly? Three, six, four, ten, fourteen, nineteen, twenty-nine. Okay. Sounds like I did the math correctly. <laughs> Uh, 
How much do I play a month? Uh, I play seven hours a day, six days a week. A few hours. Alright, I did my math correctly. To the sea. Oh, champ. It's not sure last season Game King had six to seven hundred and you had over a thousand. Oh, I'm not saying every pro player had more games than me. I'm saying a bunch of them do. Or have. Again, this song. You guys don't like this music? All right. Oh yeah, we did just play this playlist. Okay, all right, we'll change the music. Yeah, 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 it's the same. No, we're not playing this. All right, this was a song from Discord. Somebody recommended this song. Play trance? We could play trance. We play trance so often. Sticky's good. Dragon's really good. Alright, so we have call for sage. I'd like to draw one of these traps for Dragoon. My worst card is probably this. Crushing's really good. I shouldn't mulligan again, because if I hit the incinerating, it's kind of... Eh, it's actually not that yikes, because like I don't have to pull sage out. Do you know anything about new faction? I don't know anything, no, I'm sorry. They don't, they don't tell us anything. Uh, the speculation from Reddit and other Gwent players is Zircania. I'm a Give me oh no, the speculations! Not the speculations! So we have last say. These can get 5,000 charges and I don't really care. Because we have last say, it doesn't matter. We don't need to kill these. Is a royal guard deck possible? I don't think so. They're too slow. You just get removed. Army's a waste of time for one round. Yeah, okay. I don't know what he's gonna do with that. Let's just ignore it. The only card I hate is Botchling, because Botchling actually damages my shit. Benji, calm down. Yep. This was a this was a request from oh my me. I'm sniping get uh botchling by the way. Naturally, of course.
Regroup. <laughs> Is this a shoot deck? Wait, my deck or his deck? Could you turn down the music a tad? I can barely hear you think. Yeah, it's a Hensel Shoop deck. A uh, duh. Where he he, he reinforcemented one of these. Yes. Imagine having eleven charges and getting zero value out of them. That would suck, right? <laughs> yeah. Might not like. Oh, more charges, Pog. Pumpkin's first unit. None shall tread on us. Bloody four. Sometimes submission is a virtue. Hmm. Interesting. Make sure to clap. Is all day tier zero? I mean, Aldane's worst matchup is big monsters. No one's playing big monsters, so. Aldane's second worst matchup would be Shroudblood. No one's playing Shroudblood today, so yeah. The only deck I've seen play right now that would consistently beat this deck is probably Shroudblood. This deck can... It can be Shroudblood, but it's hard. I mean, this deck can beat anything. It's just difficult. I lose a point flipping it, because his last card is Sabrina. So like, yeah, we flip it, it goes to 7, but what he can do is he plays Sabrina, it takes 2 damage. And then he pings it with this, pings it with this, pings it with this. There's no reason to flip. Because the card's just gonna die. I'd rather the plus 4 on Dragon. You know what would be like 500 IQ? Play Sabrina, pass. Mary. Don't trigger it. That's what matters. Oh. Why not row cap me? Oh, okay, that makes sense on the Vernon. So the question is, would you ever play... I can trigger it? Yeah, I can trigger it. But like... I would have to damage my own cards to trigger it, and that's really bad.
win? Yeah, we win by a landslide. Ten card round, you win every time. The other way you lose with this deck is you lose round one. That's why I go so aggro in round one. All right, we drew circle. We can go hard if we find if we can find a crushing. No crushing, no call, no access to crushing. I mean, summoning circle, eleven. Okay, so no crushing ever. Eh, it's kind of hard. Six. So he has like another Doppler and like Triple Witcher or something. I guess. The lose condition in this deck is to lose round one. Yep. Let us Correct. sing the song of steel. Men are best kept on a short lead. May your sword and arm be one. Only death here for Dwan! Ah, uh, this game would be so much easier with Crushing Trap. We're like 90% losing round one. I tried your Francesca deck yesterday, need to create a five point spell, and all I got was a three. Well, yeah, that's why if you want to make that Francesca deck good, all you have to do is drop the Uma Aguar and play Garrison in 1k Fables. We beat uh, Tailbot with it yesterday. Which is fun. Time for math. The answer is no, Pumpkin. You cannot do this. <laughs> In two cards. Um, okay. Dragoon Fog Tick is 6 plus Oak is 5, 8, 13, 19, 24. Dragoon Neophyte is 6, 4, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, no crushing. I can't, I can't win this round. Oh well. Crushing is, you know, kind of kind of big. It's a 14 point crushing trap. Just draw crushing round one. And the thing is with crushing, I have one, two, three, four ways to find it. I have naked, naked, Ava, sage, and call of the forest. I have four ways to find crushing trap. Find it, which kind of sucks. We have it now, which is nice. Did you count Aileron? I did. I did all the, all the maths. And checked out. Oh, that makes sense. Turn one slave infantry. Pog. Now we will see who is weak. Is he passing? Does it make sense to win minus two to not get blood? No. I'm a dwarf I'd rather princess. take my chances.
What? <coughs> None shall tread on us. All right, good bleed. Good, nice. You bled an incinerating trap out. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I want a crushing. Mm, no Isengrim, no call is really shitty, but taking a mulligan here is incredibly risky. Yeah, Shearlade's gonna shit on me, but whatever. I've, I've accepted it. I'm not taking another mulligan because the only good hit... Well, I guess there's like three hits, but hitting this is game losing and hitting this is game losing too. There's two game losing cards and I can... I, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I can win with this hand, so there's no reason to get greedy. Accept the shit? Yes, I've accepted the shit. Nah. So what's fun about this matchup is my opponent can block the pitfall trap with his leader. That's good or bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Onward, it counters top deck with leader. But burning a three is kind of shit. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. How many P is Pitfall? Eight. That's cheap. Eight is cheap? Really? Okay. I'd say it's that cheap. So, oh, I can play Dragoon, but then I have to preemptive flip over Horny. And I don't love that. So, the correct play here, I'm pretty sure, is to Yorvith. Pretty sure. The Nordling's hatred for us will never wane. Slaughter them to a man. Does it matter which way I go? Not really.
thought you would Yorvis Pitfall? No, because he can use his leader to counter the Pitfall. So he can throw like a three point engine into the Pitfall, which is really bad. We lose to like Gimpy. That's about it. We will take back what was stolen. We're like a crazy Zoltan. Okay. Let's dance. He needs an eight to tie or an eight to win. GG. Oh, it's a different trap. Quip to Importa, thank you for the four months. Welcome back. Got some poggers in chat. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I don't like incinerating traps in round one. I like incinerating traps in round three. Sticky's good. We drew crushing. We drew summoning circle. We can go hard. This deck looks broken. Um, yeah, it likes to win a lot. It's very good. Once again, the only decks that are good against this deck are Svalblood and Monsters, and nobody's playing Monsters, so it's only Svalblood, and for some reason we're not queuing Svalblood, so yes, this deck is very good right now. I was hoping you'd say that. I want him to commit to one of these two rows before I play either of these two cards. If he commits to front, I'm gonna incinerate this. If he commits to back, I'll Dragoon this back. Alright, Dragoon it is. Or, not Dragoon it is, the other card it is. How do you feel when you queue into your own decks? Um, pretty good usually, because beating my own decks is typically pretty easy. not doable. Double Vanguard opener is so, 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 so good. Yeah, I can't beat that. So many points. Two, two Vanguards and Sapper opening hand is... <laughs> it's pretty good. Probably the best hand you can have in this era for this matchup. Uh, we never pulled out Aleron. So, two of these is fine. The Dragoon's fine with crushing. The question is, is do we keep two crushing? That's what I'm thinking about right now. Um, how bad is this deck if you face a deck with only one artifact removal? Well, one artifact removal isn't the end of the world. So the times when one artifact removal is the end of the world is if you lose coin flip 
you have one crushing trap and your points are behind crushing trap and your opponent has artifact removal for that crushing trap then you lose which is our one loss today we queued into a dana list which had nine card gold opening hand with cleaver and uh ida and we lost coin and we lost the game uh, but typically one artifact removal is not the end of the world I shall not fail! Is this the hardest deck to play? Um... I don't know. It definitely has more math involved than any other deck. I'm trying to think of what other decks have lots of math. I guess AQ with Glusty, but you just have to learn the math on Glusty. Which isn't too bad. It's just plus two per one. Um, he passed, which is really good for us. We'll go ahead and play this. Now yeah, we're lowering our speech. odds that we hit Aileron, but the reality is we have traps, and traps get transformed into elves, so we should be okay. The Dragoon's worth more, because I can set up for crushing. How often have the chance to get last A, even if losing round one if they bleed badly? What? I don't know what that means. Doing math with AQ? No, okay, so in round three, you don't have to do math with AQ, but in round one, if you're playing AQ and you run Renew, you have to do math. Oh, that's good. Um, We rip Horny, and we're flipping Horny manually for our four traps, which is fine. All right, we're okay. So I can't turn one dragon which I would love to do. The reason I can't turn one dragon is because these decks play weather. You should not have come here. Pumpkin decree in your A and R deck is a must. I don't even know what that is. A and R. Oh, R and R? No, it's not a must because Royal Decree doesn't hit anything. We already run decree. It's called Land of a Thousand Fables. Royal Decree makes zero sense in a Francesca deck. Because your targets are all specials and Royal Decree can't hit specials. Do you miss Uni Cairo? No. Uni Cairo is a pain in the butt. Because you have to play them. Right. Running like... Oh, oh, oh. In an Arnolf deck? Maybe. See if he commits the other R and R. I'd hate to see it, but you can't do anything about it. This looks like the deck we were playing yesterday. It's a really good deck if you can get to round three without blowing R and R. They can hide, but there is no escape. Like the problem is lacerate. Do you prefer double R and R round three or one R and R to force opponents stacking for last rate? Uh, depending on the deck. So some decks naturally stack anyway, so the double R and R is not None needed. On us. It looks like that's what he's gonna do. Problem is, if I commit this dragon, he's gonna slam R and R, which is really bad for me. But at the end of the day, I don't really have a choice. I can wait one turn and play a crushing now. I guess that's about it. We need to be playing on two rows to play around double lacerate. Because double lacerate is very painful. I 
I want to see Iris popping up in decks. People need to start playing a lot of Francesca for Iris to start seeing play. This deck looks like card for card the same as what I was playing yesterday. What is R and R? Uh, Ragnarug, the gold weather. People abbreviate it to R and R because it's easier to pronounce, or faster to pronounce. You didn't have sappers. Uh, I played one sapper at one point and then cut it. it it's you can play sappers. It's an elf. There's no reason not to. Running Ida and sappers is just good. Oh, it feels so good. We baited the Ida. This is another thing to get into the habit of. Doing this. Doing this kind of thing. Very good. Enough of this farce. Vedrai Enlay! I think we actually win the game because of that. Why didn't you play Elven Scout on the turn that crushing flips? Because they play muzzle and you can muzzle my card, and getting muzzled feels really bad. You really hope they'll nerf traps? They won't. The play rate of traps is very low. Crushing trap is too cheap. It's not though. Think about it. It's a last rate for 1p cheaper. If it was 7p, it would be shit. Also, it can be a zero because of cards like uh artifact removal. You can't you can't nerf crushing trap. So if you make it 7p, it's shit. If you bump it... So the way they would nerf it is they make it... They would revert it back to three turns. That's how they nerf it. That, that, that would be how they nerf it. Crushing should be a gold. Okay, sure, you could make that point, but then they need to introduce a new bronze trap because we're already running low on traps they shouldn't be they shouldn't be introducing fewer traps they should be introducing more traps um this is hard double last rate is a free four points for him and i'm still doing this Are you shitting me? Well, we have officially seen the best Uma that will ever exist, ever. We will never see a better Uma as long as I live. Don't worry about me. Ever. Mankind will never witness a better Uma. Right 
Right. This is the only card in the game I could potentially lose the game to. We shall drive the ape men into the sea. Uh, no, it's not even enough. Double lacerate. Uh, not enough. Is double last rate enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven units, fourteen, twenty-eight. Eighteen. No, it's not. We still win, even with like best case scenario. Are you gonna try to make an Uma? Yeah, but there's no Uma that does it. Even Gimpy isn't enough. The Nordling's hatred for us will never 